everyone. I'm Brantley J. Brown. Um, I'm a screenwriter um, who works primarily in the horror genre. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> I love I love horror movies. So let me ask you our first question, and then we can dive more into that. Okay. What do you think people's first impression of you is? Oh, um, <laughs> that I'm unusually nice. That seems to be what I've gotten most since moving out to California, um, especially when I worked in Los Angeles. Everybody I talked to, they said, you're not from here, are you? And I'm like, no, how can you tell? And they said, because you, you have this certain um, genuine niceness about you. And I said, oh, that comes from like the Southern hospitality thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now you say it's because you're not from California. Um, tell us where you moved from. Um, I grew up in a small town in southeast Missouri called East Prairie, which uh, has more grain silos than stop signs. Um, and then uh, later in life, uh, I moved near Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, it was close enough to home but far enough away for me to kind of try and spread my wings. And I liked Tennessee a lot. Um, and it's where I met my fiance. So, you know, it, it was obviously where I needed to be at the time, but there's not much of a market for a screenwriter there. So yeah, after the music town, right? Yeah. Yeah. So after living there for about four years, um, my fiance, AJ was finishing college and we were kind of at this, point you know it was like well what do we do next and I just kind of threw the idea out well let's go to California thinking that he would you know shrug it off like yeah yeah and he thought about it for a total of eight hours and he was like let's do it <laughs> so tell me how long you and AJ have been together six years as of May 23rd of this year <laughs> hey that's my birthday hey <laughs> well happy belated birthday well that just a good date so it's it is a good date just fine <laughs> <laughs> and you said no date set no not yet um I kind of stole the thunder from him when it came to the proposal he always envisioned that he was going to be the one to to pop the question and I was getting kind of impatient <laughs> I guess and so I planned the whole thing out I um took him to our first restaurant that we ever went on a date to. And I asked him there and he decided, he said, okay, well, fine. You asked, you, you got to pop the question, but uh, we're not going to do the wedding until I can give you the wedding that I think, you know, you deserve. So I was like, I can live with that. And that's fine. You know, I, I'm not in any, rush now I, I don't think he's going anywhere I mean we moved across the country together so you know <laughs> I don't think I think that's that's perfectly fine and then you know COVID delays everything anyways especially here oh, in California so yeah. so it bought AJ some time so tell him he's, he's good <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I actually um two and a half weeks ago Nick and I just got married and mm -hmm. we've been together for eight and a half years and we um he actually did something similar. He asked me to marry him in the spot where we had our first date also at the end of the Santa Barbara Pier. But um, I, I just, you just postpone and you do what you can. So I don't think right. he's going anywhere. I think it will be just fine. Yeah, so. I, in fact, I told him, but, but I told him I have always envisioned a very simple wedding. You know, nothing too big and fancy. And he's over here. He's like, oh no, we should, we should have it. Hey, you write, you write horror movies. Maybe we should do a horror themed wedding. And I'm like, no. <laughs> You're like, I do that every day. I don't want to do that right. every day. <laughs> that one I want to be kind of magical and pretty and leave the blood and guts in, in my, in my writing. <laughs> right. Right. So let's talk about that. How did you get into writing horror film? Uh, well, let's see. When I was still in junior high, I was already a huge horror fan. My dad, against my 
you know, my mom's wishes, let me get started early watching, you know, the old movies, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, Friday the 13th. So I knew those movies from beginning to end, you know, by the time I was 13 years old. And I had always liked to tell stories, but it wasn't until then that one of my um, teachers actually encouraged me to start writing my stories down. And I wasn't quite comfortable enough to put my own uh, stories on paper. So what I decided to do um, as sort of like a practice run, um, I decided to write a script based off of one of the movies that I liked. And the movie that inspired me the most was Halloween. So I wrote a full length, <laughs> wrote a full length um, Halloween script. And I let all of my teachers and my classmates read it and they couldn't believe that I actually wrote it and it gave me confidence. And from then I never stopped writing. So from 13 years to now I'm 36. So I, you know, I've been writing for a long time, professionally for three, but I've always, I've always been writing. I love that. Okay. So I have to know because horror is my favorite too. Like mm -hmm. when I was a little girl, we went to get ice cream and to the video store next door and we were allowed to each pick out a movie and I always picked a horror movie. And then I'm talking like age eight. I'm uh -huh. watching the nightmare on Elm streets, the Halloween's I saw Halloween five in the movie theater at the red rock cinemas in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. See six was uh, part six was mine. Um, I'd seen all of them on video because of video store rentals and things like that. And then in 1995, which about lines up whenever I decided to write, because uh, I was 12, about to turn 13 when that came out, and my parents took me to see it. So that was my first horror movie in a theater. And uh, it kind of was the beginning of everything else. I, I, it was such a frightening, incredible experience sitting there watching this movie. And it was kind of like, oh, I want to do this. I want to I make people scared. <laughs> I can't explain, but the, I think the season of like fall and Halloween all in general is my favorite. It's my favorite time of the year. Um, AJ tells me that I am the most basic that you can be because the minute that it turns September 1st, I'm going to the store and I've got my pumpkin spice latte uh, creamer and I've got my fall decorations coming out. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I usually am very good. Like October 1, I'm in the front yard with all the gravestones, the skeletons, the this, yeah. the that. But this year, I'm just, I don't know. Are you having trouble this year getting into uh, the spirit? I am. In fact, I, I, I forced myself to start decorating, putting like the fall leaves and things in the house. Because I've been kind of in a funk. Not like super depressed, but it's almost like, there is no rhyme or reason to this year. It all just has kind of started to run right into another. So I'm like, oh, it's September. Oh, it's going to be Halloween soon. Well, big deal, because it's not going to be the same <laughs> this yes. year. The one thing that at least I will say is with my job as a writer, that luckily didn't change too much because that I stay home and I sit at a desk and I write. Luckily, that... but. It's gotten to a point, um, I, I don't remember what it was like either to, to get yeah. out. And, and the, the face mask is another thing. That has become so normal to me. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how I'm going to slip back into when that isn't a thing. And I don't know how long that's going to be. I feel like we're probably going to be wearing masks for another year or so. You know? Agreed. So do you do what I do? Do you watch the TV and when you see something you go, why aren't they wearing their mask? <laughs> that's what happens in my head now but yeah. I, I i want to i want to start stocking up on different style of mask now i'm embracing it i want to get halloween themed mask christmas themed mask you know just and even different colors because i might as well start coordinating with my outfits so when i do have to go out <laughs> look good while doing it yeah <laughs> i love it so um what is something that would surprise people to know about you? Well, 
that I'm as much as I am a huge horror fan, my absolute favorite movie in general is The Wizard of Oz. Ha! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. I do too. I don't, I have actually a little shrine to The Wizard of Oz in our movie room. It's mostly horror. There's horror posters and there's a six foot tall mannequin with Michael Myers' outfit and mask on. But then right in the corner, I've got this collection of the Wizard of Oz figurines and the ruby slippers and everything. But it's just kind of tucked away. But I love The Wizard of Oz. It's, it's probably my all-time favorite movie. It's fantastic. Yes. It is so good. Um, I can't say so much for the play that I saw recently, but the movie, fantastic. <laughs> the movie, is, and, it, and I'm very glad that it is at least one of the films so far that Hollywood has not tried to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, I didn't. Because <laughs> I think that's one that could actually be done very well now. Yeah, let's not give anyone any ideas. They've ruined enough of our childhood, don't you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of remakes, um, as a fan of horror films, um, what do you think of all of the remakes that have come out in the last 10 years? Because I think that's all they've done. It's been I mostly think the remaking. Word boycott comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think it started, it seemed like back in 2003 with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. which I did like that one. That one was well done. But I think it caused a big problem in the film industry. People saw that, ooh, we can remake a really old movie and it'll make a bazillion dollars. So let's remake all of them. And not all of them needed to be remade. A Nightmare mm -hmm. on Elm Street still is perfect to this day. It stands the test of time. Halloween is perfect. It didn't need to be remade. No. How about uh, Poltergeist? We won't talk about the remake of Poltergeist. Thank you. I, I like the first one. And I don't even know how to categorize that. I could watch remake. <laughs> Poltergeist 1, 2, and 3. Granted, the original is the end all be all, but I yeah. can watch it. I can quote it. I can all day, every day. I saw they were remaking it. And I think I actually cried. <laughs> yeah. I, tr I tried to be optimistic. And then. Well, you're nicer than me. Well, you know, because well, the thing is, the teaser trailer when they showed it, it just gave enough of a glimpse that there was still a glimmer of hope because it was like, oh, okay. It's different, but they're not um, going to take a dump all over the original. And then I saw the actual movie. I waited for it to come out in video. I didn't want to go to the theater and see it. Oh, it was so bad. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> I just thought, I'll just tell you, I won't even see it. So there was just yeah. no way. There was no yeah. way. There's some things I just can't, like, Re, what is it? Um, you remember when we could tape over things with VHS tapes or with cassette tapes? There's yes. just some things I won't tape over. I do want to ask you about the um, team you're a part of, the Horror House Films. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you about that real quick before I ask you our last oh, conversation yeah. and of course anything else you want to share. But tell me a little about Horror House Films and how that group got formed and and what you guys do. Um, well, Horror House Media started three years ago, um, my friend and writing partner, Michael Cologne, uh, we had started working together on a feature script and our friend Ray McCann Jr. was looking to start producing some short content to put online. And he, he approached us about doing something horror themed. And so we kind of just, just started sending texts and phone calls and emails back and forth. And the idea of horror house media came along and we decided it would be a perfect platform to uh, show everybody what we could do in our strongest areas. So I would be the main writer, Michael would direct them and Ray would produce all of them. And so we did a short one called soundbite. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but um, Soundbite was our first one, and it was four minutes, you know, nothing too involved. It was just basically what would have been like the opening scene of a movie. We released it on Halloween of that year, and it ended up winning like eight awards, I think. <laughs> yeah. That's um, so cool. 
Yeah, and so from there, we've now done, we just finished our fourth film, and it's coming out on Hall around Halloween this year. I think it might even come out on Halloween. It's okay, called Bag so of we Tricks. Do you know what it's called? Yep, Bag of Tricks. Bag of Tricks, okay. Yep, awesome. and it's a, it's a definite love uh, letter to, ha the, to the holiday of Halloween. Oh, I'm so excited for it. Yeah, I, I, I can't see myself working in any other genre. I have dabbled in a few Christmas films, which, whatever. <laughs> and Girl, but somehow someone always dies. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, um, they haven't been produced yet, but Michael and I have written two full-length films that were geared for Lifetime. Um, they, I find them very fun and heartwarming. But I almost feel like uh, it was a struggle to write them. You know, I'm, I'm not as comfortable in that uh, area. If nobody's getting killed with a knife or by a ghost, or a, I, I just, I can't get into it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I, I am so excited to see um, that upcoming film, Bag of Tricks. And I am interested in the other ones, too. So you'll definitely have to post the link so that I can watch them. I love horror movies. Oh, I will. I will. Um, and we're hopefully um, this new one that's coming out, Bag of Tricks, we're talking about turning it into a feature. So I'm actually working on that script now in my free time, which I have a lot of. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> right? New normal. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Well, I would be excited to see how that progresses. And please keep me posted and keep me in the loop. And I will. allow me to help promote and share anything and vice versa. So um, last but not least, if obviously post COVID and obviously maybe even without a mask, you mm -hmm. were walking down the street and you could tell people one thing about yourself, what would you want people to know? Hmm. I think this is going to sound so conceited because it's because I do it anyway. That's what AJ says. I always do. <laughs> it's like, hey, guess what? I'm a writer. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I love talking about myself. <laughs> that, that's OK. <laughs> well, especially here. I find that that is the best way to survive in the film industry is you just have to be ready to tell people, this is what I do. <laughs> I love that though. I love that because we don't know about people that we pass by and we definitely don't know what they do. Yeah, and I don't know if you're like this, but sometimes when I have passed people, it's kind of fun to wonder. Like I'm like, I wonder what their story is just by the way that their hair is fixed or the clothes they're wearing. And you're kind of like, hmm. <laughs> Uh, hello, I want to know your story. How do you think this, yeah. show, this show was born? Because, <laughs> so Nick will tell you, my husband will tell you that I'm nosy, but I really just actually am genuinely interested in people's stories. Like what you said is like, I walk and I wonder. And then if we're in a restaurant or something, I have really good hearing, I can hear. And so then it makes me even more curious about the context mm -hmm. and really what's going on. So if you, if you and I passed on the street and you um, or if we were sitting a couple tables away at a restaurant, I would just be naturally wanting to know like what you were about and what one of the about. one of the best places uh, um, to to be exposed to so many people I found was uh, when I've had to use the metro system there in Los Angeles because every single day when i I was working on a film set right before covid um hit. And I would take the metro to get back and forth from where I was staying to set. And the same time every day, I would get on the same train, but it was never the same two people. And I got to noticing, you know, it was like, there's just always so many different faces around me and so many different, like I was the, the people who play the guitar you know, they'd be there some days and then there's people singing and then you'd have nurses sitting next to them looking very tired after, you know, their shifts. And I was, I, that was why I told AJ, I said, LA is probably one of my favorite cities to be in, but it's also one of the scariest because it's so, it's so huge. It seems like it's almost impossible to get to know people on a very personal level. 
Yep. Which is part of my motivation for putting everyone's stories out there is because like you said, we try really hard not to judge others. Mm -hmm. But when you don't know, you have to make assumptions. Yeah. And sometimes they may not be the nicest or best assumptions. Right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I'm so happy to have met you. And oh, so same. Excited. Same. I'm so yeah. Excited. <laughs> yeah, this is I, I love it because it's been so long, it seems like since I've had a chance to actually have a conversation with people outside of my house. You know, I'm I'm very much trying to be as safe as possible. So I don't get out a whole lot. And it's very nice to, to just sit and chat. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed it tremendously, but I should probably let you get back to your writing and let's talk anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you.